the P14 PWM from Arctic. Is it as good as its little brother, the P12, or is it better? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here, and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, and PC case fans. Now before getting onto the overview, to have full disclosure, I did buy this fan myself, so all the opinions expressed in this video are mine. So if you end up liking this video, please give the video a like, and if you really like the video, please hit that subscribe button because it really does help out a lot. Plus, if you really appreciate all the testing I do, then please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. A link is in the description. Okay, I'll start off with a quick overview of the P14 series. There is the P14, which comes in black, has a three pin fan header, and a rated RPM of 1700. This fan can be bought as a single fan or in a pack. There is the P14 Silent, which comes in black. It also has a three pin fan header, but has a rated RPM of only 950. There is the P14 PWM, which comes in three color options. This fan has a four pin fan header and a max rated RPM of 1700. There is the P14 PWM PST, which has three color options if you buy it as a single fan, but only comes in black if you want to buy it in a pack. This fan has a four pin PWM fan header, as well as a built in fan splitter. It also has a max rated RPM of 1700. There is the P14 PWM PST CO, which comes in only black. It has a four pin fan header, as well as a built in splitter, and also has a max rated RPM of 1700. Now the CO stands for continuous operations, so IE is meant for server use. There is the P14 Slim PWM PST, which comes in only black. It has a four pin PWM connector, as well as a built in splitter. Now this has a max rated RPM of 1800, and since it is the slim, it is only 16 millimeters rather than the typical 27 millimeters. Finally, there is the P14 PWM PST ARGB and RGB, which has a black frame with transparent blades. These fans have a four pin PWM fan connector with built in splitters, plus the connector for the LEDs. Now this does have a max rated RPM of 1900. Now the fan I tested was the Arctic P14 PWM. So it has a max rated RPM of 1700. It has a minimum rated RPM of 200. There are five blades. It is a fluid dynamic bearing. Again, it is PWM, so it has a PWM four pin fan connector. I, I tested the black on black version, which typically retails for around 13 USD. Now, before getting to the results of my testing, I wanted to be very clear. All this testing is based off of a sample size of one. So this isn't necessarily the exact performance that you're going to get, but it should give you a pretty good representation on what to expect. So starting off with the PWM range at 100% PWM, this P14 PWM had a RPM of 1825 ish. Then when I dropped the PWM down to zero, this P14 PWM had an RPM of 380 ish, which is a little bit higher than the minimum rated 200 RPM, but still gives you a really good RPM range. Now moving on to my standardized testing. If you have any questions on how I test the fans, please check my fan testing methodology video. There'll be a card along the top and I'll also have it linked down in the description. But please note, I have updated the cooler I use to test the CPU cooling performance. I am now using the Frost Commander 140 so that I can now test the 140 millimeter fans and the 120 millimeter fans using the same cooler. So it's a little bit more apples to apples. Starting with the DBA and RPM testing at four volts, this P14 PWM had a DBA of 32, which is the noise floor of my room and an RPM of 680. At six volts, it had a sound level reading of only 32.2 dBA and an RPM of 1015. At eight volts, the dBA went up to only 32.5 with an RPM of 1315. 
Then at 10 volts, the DBA went up to 34 and the RPM went up to 1580. And finally at 12 volts, the DBA was 36.3 with an RPM of 1835. Okay, now for the sound recordings at each of these voltages. First, the ambient room noise for reference. Okay, now onto the airflow testing. I left the DBA numbers up on the chart for your reference. At four volts with no obstructions, it had an FPM of 135. With the meshed panel, it had an FPM of 92. And with the covered panel, it had an FPM of 24. Jumping up to 12 volts to save some time. With no obstructions, it had an FPM of 495. With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 445, and with the covered panel, it had an FPM of 200. Moving right along to the CPU cooling performance. At 4 volts, the average CPU steady state temperature was 83.2 C. At 6 volts, it was 77.5 C. At 8 volts, it was 75.3 C. At 10 volts, it was 73.6 C. And at 12 volts, it was 73.2C. Okay, so I'll be comparing the Arctic P14 PWM to the Arctic P12 PWM PST, the Arctic F14 PWM PST, and the Thermalright C12 Pro. So when comparing the P12 PWM with these other fans, it has a very similar DBA to the other Arctic fans when voltage equalized. Then when comparing the airflow, the P14 with no obstructions moves a good amount of air, but both the F14 PWM PST and the C12 Pro move more air when voltage equalized. Now again, this is with no obstructions, so it doesn't really mean anything. Then in the mesh panel testing, things don't really change much. The P14 moves a good amount of air, but the F14 and the C12 Pro move more air when voltage equalized. Then in the cover panel testing, all the fans take a pretty big drop in FPM, but the F14 even more so than the other fans. Moving on to the CPU cooler testing, all these fans perform pretty well, so I'm really not sure what else to say about it. So moving on to the 34 dBA testing. So having all the fans noise equalized to 34 dBA or 12 volts if the fan doesn't actually make it up to 34 dBA, now with no obstructions, the P14 PWM is pretty much topping the chart, sitting just below the F14 PWM PST with an FPM of 420. In the mesh panel testing, the P14 PWM is again pretty much topping the chart with an FPM of 370, but again, the F14 does beat it. And finally, in the covered panel test, the P14 PWM has an FPM of 170, which has only its little brother, the P12 PWM PST, doing better. Which does make sense because smaller fans do typically have higher static pressure, which static pressure is key in this test. Okay, so what do I think of the Arctic P14 PWM? Well, it's a good fan at a good price with a good warranty. It moves a good amount of air in all the scenarios, so it would probably be a pretty good choice for pretty much anywhere in your system. But it wasn't the best in any of those scenarios. The P14 might be the best all around noise to performance fan I've tested so far, but it's not the best fan for every scenario, if that makes sense. So I would say if you're looking for a case fan for behind a covered front panel, like the S100 or S300 from Thermaltake, that can actually fit a 12 or 14 centimeter fan, I would say get whatever is cheapest in your region between the Arctic P12 PWM and the Arctic P14 PWM. But if you're looking for a fan to put behind a mesh front panel like the 4000D Airflow or the NR600, you should probably be looking at the Arctic F12 PWM or the Arctic F14 PWM. Or if you don't really care so much about noise, 
the Thermalrite C12 Pro. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There's also the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you need to do is agree to the server rules and you get to view all the charts from all my videos. There is a link down in the description. There is also Patreon if you would like to support the channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. You may also want to check out these videos here. They should be along the same lines of what you just watched. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.